Generals, gentlemen. We are rocking and rolling. Here we go. So it will be Soviets for putting bag. He has counterattack and he has mechanized support. So probably not a very good map for the ISU because it's very open. And I, I think the most important thing with the ISU's viability, it's, it's not necessarily choke points are open. I think the main thing for me is can you rotate VPs? Yeah. Uh, on, this is a map where, no, the ISU cannot... Maybe south and north, but it, it absolutely shines on a map like Lungra's because you can lock down both of those, the middle and, and the top VP, or the middle and the bottom, and hold it and win the, the VP late game. Force your opponent to attack you. Where here, if you rotate, you don't get flanked. Yeah, it's, it's so... There's open the shop lockers. So I don't think we'll see the, uh, the mechanized support. I doubt it. Um, but I could be wrong. I mean, we've certainly been wrong before about Pudding Bag. Quite so, So we yeah. will count yeah. nothing out uh, for Pudding Bag. Um, looking at the builds here, pretty standard there. I mean, there's, there's no Ostrupin, so we can't really do anything other than, than two Grens. But actually, no MG. Uh, no MG this time. No, not for Jeslin. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of surprising and, and not surprising. I mean, he just wants more Grenadiers out, but you got that really important garrison in the middle. It could be nice to rush an MG out to, to kind of cover that area. Decides not to go for it. Decides to go for for more Grenadiers here. Have to see how it goes. Yeah, a bit of wire here as well. This is nice. It's going to make it a lot harder for um, putting back to run through that. He's actually wired off the capping circle, so... He can go through... I don't think he's going to in that door. He can certainly go in the garrison, but that, that wire may block him off yeah. getting out of the can garrison. Can get out again? Yeah, that's... That, that's um, not sure about that one. Grenadier is definitely going to be winning against these combat engineers. Finds a nice engagement and, and stops the uh, the capping squad here from putting back. Really has been using the uh, the starter squad to just cap points on one side while sending his conscript squads or grenadier squads over to the other one. So that's probably what Jezlin was thinking here. He's seen the, the play twice so far. This time he says, no, I'm going to go for the extra grenadier squad. It's going to stop the, the caps coming out and I'm going to take the map control early. Yeah, this is really uh, brutal here for putting back, losing this garrison. If you're playing on the, the north side, this garrison is so important. It locks down the VP... Um, pretty much the entire south of the map, so really giving that one away is a problem. Getting the, the flames and the Molotovs to clear that out is um, quite necessary. Fortunately, Soviets are the best garrison clearing faction, so not as punishing as it would be if he was something different that does lack the garrison clearing methods, as, as accessible at least. MG coming out now, so maybe he's going to try and hold that with his Grins and then give it over to his MG. That would be ideal. Didn't surprise me at all. At the same time, though, I mean, putting still has one con conscript squad up in this right hand side, and we'll be capping up this fuel. Wonder if it'll be more grenadiers coming out here from Jeslin. We've seen him go really heavy tier one before, just like lots and lots of grenadiers, lots and lots of support weapons. Uh, he's really good at using them, so yeah, see what he goes for. Almost has enough manpower for another squad. Still has control over the middle as well. Putting bag going to be using. The old 10 conscript down the bottom here has the engineers working with the conscripts to try and win these engagements. But they're engaging out in the open against these grenadiers. Big flat. Well, yeah. We'll get suppressed here trying to go for the cutoff. Um, conscripts will force it away though. So actually, very aggressive cutoff here, but he has six grenadiers. And there's actually five windows. So he can, he can uh, have a pretty powerful... Um, zoning control from that garrison. He's got Another even more Grenadier guns. squad there as well. Really wants to keep control over the center of this map. And uh, putting aside the pullback, he's actually going to go for the caps down the bottom here, going for the, the fuel and the VP as well. Um, how quickly can Jezelen reinforce the middle, I think, is going to be the real question. Yeah, but actually, the retreat path's going to be quite punishing here as well, having to retreat through three squads of cons. Negative cover as well. Not actually focusing it, but yeah, that's alright. He gets away. Bleed could be a problem here for putting um, pretty low on manpower at the moment. Gonna have to be reinforcing these squads. Med is coming out as well. Yeah. So often it can, be, it can be better for Soviets in, in an engagement like that because Soviets have their medics a lot more accessible. You don't have to go for the, the, the 60 munitions. You don't have to build the bunker. You can just get it whenever you want. So sometimes um, you can you can actually get punished by not dropping models, but then you know having very low low uh, models. Gets the MG reface just in time, 
will force those conscripts away. So Jeslin's holding onto his territory. He is. Kind of. <laughs> kind of, sort of. It's hard to hold onto your territory against Pudding Bag. Yeah, there's two fuel here for Pudding Bag, but this one's been uh, cut off for a while. It seems so. like he has more squads than he should actually have squads, and more territory yeah. than he should. Yeah. Still he can control this garrison as well. Hasn't had a chance to move the MG up, but probably will be fairly shortly. So Pudding Bag can afford a Flamer, but this squad's actually not in friendly territory. He can't equip the Flamer until he walks in friendly territory. So that's a um, a bit of a blow for him. He's going to have to retreat now. There's a the Medics, though. Being forced. Does yep. have the Medics. Uh, didn't go for the fifth, fifth Conscript squad straight away this time. Going for the Medics first, then going for the additional Con. Uh, so similar setup to as we saw in, in game one where we saw that con spam strat. No indication if we will go for it again though. Some people just like having lots of conscripts. Yeah. It is quite a nice feeling. Especially when you press Ura on all of them <laughs> and there's just a, a choir of Uras. And a rain of AT grenades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Say. Be nice as well. Fourth, fourth grenade is what I like this from Jeslin. He's going man for man here. Uh, not going to be backing down. Not too many support weapons. Just having enough squads out on the field to, to try and take map control. I do like that as well because Feynmanville, it's it's a very mobile map. You do have to, because there's so many cutoffs and there's so many really high value garrisons, you have to have a mobile army and you have to do rotate around the map. So going support weapons or snipers can be uh, quite risky or at least you know a heavy focus on them. So I think this Grenadier play um, is, is definitely quite nice to see. It will be the conscript support tactics locked in again and hey, why not? He's already got five squads of cons. It worked the first time, but yeah. the second time. Machine, yeah, exactly. So. so I'm really interested to see what is the response here from yeah, Jeslin. That's, like, that's, that's it. He's going to work out it's coming quite soon. And because even f like for myself, I still have no idea how to deal with this. And uh, so yeah. we'll see if Jeslin has an answer. Um, snipers, I still don't think snipers are going to work because it, you're just going to get flanked and just, just killed. But you know, there's too many cons for snipers to work. MGs, yeah, can work, but also you can get flanked with that many squads. Hit the dirt uh, means that you know you won't get suppressed, so you have that advantage as well. Grenadier upgrades are going to be important this time for Jezlon. I think he needs to have a, a bit of a better focus on not having these upgrades for the Grenadiers because they're not, just not dueling well yeah. um, with the conscripts. And your ability to actually spread out and take map control is going to be really important. If you can't take on a conscript squad, you can be in trouble. Yeah, I, I think maybe like a half track. Just to, to yeah, give him yeah. a lot more nice. territory, he doesn't have to retreat. He can hold his ground. Um, you know, maybe if he even goes the flamer on his half track, and he, he needs to have enough fuel that he can rush out a P4, preferably an Osfin, but I doubt he'll be able to go for that. Yeah. Um, and and if he has a, a tier three vehicle, he's in a good spot. But if he if he stalls for a tiger, he's not going to be able to deal with with the, that con spam. Um, close air support. Mm, the anti-infantry strafe, it's dodged too easily. Definitely. Like, it's it's not as good as, as um, as, like, the, the loiter, because you, you can step aside and dodge it. But still, I mean, if you have a lot of squads in a radius, you're going to hit some of them, and, and having that insta pin can be quite handy as well. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out for it. Um, and this really has been a game of, of maneuvering. Uh, just capturing, decapturing. Once again, hit the dirt. Very high intensity play coming out here. It's a rough nade, he yeah, retreats Nice someone. retreat coming out there. Wastes well, a few more munitions as well. Jeslin doesn't really have the munis to spare if he wants those upgrades, so pretty smart, I think, from putting bag. Yeah, exactly. And the munitions, as Blake said, will, will certainly help for the, those weapons. And S mines are really great to have. Um, you do have a few great spots here where you have, you know, kind of narrow walkways that you often don't notice. Already we see some pretty big changes um, coming out. Jeslin, instead of going for the P-Grand Squad, gets the predictive pack. But Pudding Bag isn't as far ahead as he was in the first game. Nowhere near, in fact. So yeah. he, there's not really that T-70 rush three, four. threat coming Four Grands. So he's got a pack. Has a pack now, yeah. Just just predictive, just in case. I mean, he saw the, the T-70 the first during the first game and doesn't want to get uh, mucked around by a light vehicle. I think Jeslin has just had really good engagements. He's been fighting in situations where he has the better cover, he has the better squads. Might only gets one, gets one, one bottle, huge deal. that's unfortunate. So I think, I think Jeslin's just micro and his, his decision where he's been fighting has been really uh, up to scratch this time, which has yeah. put him in a great spot. And the MG placement, I wouldn't say he's being more aggressive with it, but he's using it in more of a supporting role. Previously he was using it to hold 
uh, cutoffs, uh, holding point impor important points uh, on the side of Angoville. This time he's, he's using it in synergy with these Grenadier squads to prevent the conscripts from actually overwhelming them. The conscripts aren't able to close in uh, and, and find the, the great engagement of the Grenadiers, the kind of two-on-ones, because that MG's already always supporting at the top. Yeah, so Pigram's coming out as well. Hit the dirt, prevents the suppression. This is a great ability. It will get the su no, doesn't get the suppression. Hit the dirt. So, um, still, it will be a lot of damage though. Like you, you still will have to retreat sooner or later. Oh, no Molotovs. Uh, I think he just wants to decap this fuel, but he will lose a bit of models in the process. Yeah, pioneers are going to get there just in time. Also, the bear in mind though is putting back once he six command points, because then he gets the access to rapid conscription, and once he gets that, we're going to see uh, a big spike in terms of his conscript squads. He's got his T70 coming out now. He's got a fair bit of manpower as well, so. Maybe a Maxim. Water, I'm not sure. He's going definitely has something in mind um, to be floating that much manpower. T70, yeah, it's on the way, but there's already a pack. That's that's it, though. The, an LMG upgrade this time. Oh, nice. Machine. Yeah, really nice. Love, love it, Jesla. And LMGs work well on a map where you have heavy cover or garrisons, um, because then you can use them more statically, which is where LMGs want to be. Ango Ville, like, you don't really have heavy cover in Ango. You, you do have garrisons, but you can kind of avoid them, whereas on Faymanville, the garrisons are in really important spots that do cover uh, important uh, resources and, and the VPs, so... LMGs are strong on this map. Pigrins have a nice flank on here. We'll have to force this retreat, but it will be the almost six command points. Very close to it. And the T-70 is going to be out now. The pack was here a long time ago, so he's ready to go, ready to rumble, and it will be the Shreks as well, probably coming out for Deslon once he sees that T-70. I'm not sure. Can he deal with a T-70? I mean, with just a pack. It seems yeah, probably not. It's, it's just not enough, is it? But you won't be able to kill it, but he may be able to zone it away long enough for him to get his a P4 or a Stug of his own, and then he'll be able to deal with that. Uh, they have a rapid conscription, but he once again, the MG gets a double suppression. The MG placement in this game has just been fantastic. Vet2 as well, giving it even more suppression. Cons almost get wiped here. Pudding Bag just has to retreat all over the place, so the MG keeps getting suppression. Yep. A lot of retreats coming out here. So the T70 is zoning down the bottom, and that's allowing Pudding Bag to keep a hold of the fuel, the VP, and the Muni's point. All extremely important. After all my hard work. Rotating over to the middle here. Could be running into the pack though, with that being said. T70 does look like he's going to have to back away. Does actually go down there, finally, yeah, to the pack. Pack actually took about three Enemy shots there, but does finally manage to uh, take it out. We didn't actually see, did we see the pop there? Did we see the crew repair? Was it not in time? It did actually come out, but yeah, no, it doesn't, doesn't look like it was in time there, so. Uh, does end up going down. Poor T70, and uh, now putting back in a very, very rough position. Yeah, losing that T70 really wasn't what he needed, but again, he lost it in the first game, and it, it didn't matter as much. He has his two squads from the rapid description. Yeah. Unless he built one of them. But he's got six cons now, so... That's he, record time for Jezlon on killing the T-70. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. He's on his way to getting 12 yeah. conscripts. But we already have four somewhat vetted Grens with LMG, P Grens. They don't have Shreks this time. So they're going to be uh, fighting pretty effectively um, against these, even the People's H cons. So long as they're not up close. Um, P Grens are best at medium range. Um, and if the People's H conscripts charge in, they'll probably die. But... You know, if they get a flank off, uh, they'll, they'll shred them up close. But again, there's just so many of them. They outnumber him all over the place. But the MD's in the garrison, and he can't Molotov because he's going to have run into these Pigrins. Yeah. Doesn't even have the Molotov upgrade just yet. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm feeling an Oswin, man. I'm uh, seriously feeling an Oswin with the T-70 having gone down. Yeah, here I we mean, go. So how far off are we? He wants his P4, though, because otherwise okay, an SU-76 yeah, is just going to destroy his Oswin. Um, it's still SU-76 is great against P4s, but you can you know, flank them, faust them, and I actually get that engagement. P4. Yeah, the P4 still is going to have good anti-infantry, uh, and this is where Jezelin needs to be. He needs to have that tier 3 out, which he does. He's had the fuel advantage in the mid-game, really good engagements, good MG placement, and he's just in a much greater shape than game 1. So this game could go either way, though. Pilding Bag has a fair bit of munitions banked up, so you will have more free con squads. I definitely do like the switch here from Jezlin. He can't just save it for a Tiger at this point. It's, uh, it didn't work in the first game, and it's not going to work now. Oh, the no, this con squad is behind the heavy cover for now, but he's going to have to retreat in the open. The MG gets the wipe. There we go. That's one more squad down. Mordo actually is barraging, but not quite going to be preventing that wipe. Maybe 
if he wiped the gunner just as the cons were retreating. There was a chance. Or smoke barrage, perhaps, if he had the time for it, but I'm sure he didn't. Uh, LMG Grins having to walk into the cons, not the best engagement here, but they are vet too, so they should win this one. Two squads of LMG Grins now. This is, these are the kind of engagements that the uh, Jezlon is, uh, is after. And only one PPSH squad. That's interesting. It really just values the rapid conscription more than PPSH's. Yeah. Um, Has to have access to it at all times. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Engagements. He, he can't fight without it. That would that would just be yeah. slander. Preposterous. I'm happy with it. So it will be the P4 coming out here for Jeslon as you predict yeah. the machine. Has enough nice munis, safe choice. Has enough munis for a Pintle, so... I, I wouldn't be mad right now if I was Jeslin. No, I would be, be really cool, happy. calm, and relaxed. I think this is exactly how he should have reacted to, to losing the first game. He, uh, he had more map control, went for the additional Grenadier Squad early, uh, started getting the upgrades as well. Uh, we did actually lose a Pioneer Squad. Uh, oh, yes. He did actually just lose a Pioneer Squad, so one has gone down. We'll have oh, to rebuild this that one NG Squad, repair. though. The NG Squad is going down. See, the problem with that is that's the dream. When you have a Vet 2 Engineer Squad, but with a Minesweeper, because yeah. you get the faster repair speed, and normally you don't get Vet 2 unless you have a Flamer. And having a flamer repairing can end horribly if the flamer, you know, gets blown up, um, take out multiple engineer squads. So having a vet two or vetted in vet three, especially with a minesweeper, is very rare and very nice to have. But now he's lost that one, um, and this pigrin squad is doing so well. Fifteen kills. It's vet two. These cons, not all of them are vetted. That's the problem. The vet zero cons are going to get demolished just charging into these, these vetted P-Grants. New squads that are coming up right now. Yeah. SG-76 is going to be coming onto the field as well. Good choice for putting back. Had to go for that one. Needs a response to this P-4. And now this has delayed his tier 4. In the first game, putting back didn't have to go for the SG-76. No, he didn't. Because there was no tier 3. So another reason why this tier 3 play from Jeslin uh, is working really well, or was going to especially work out well for him. Uh, is on the field now, though. Uh, AT grenades. We don't have them just yet. We do have mollies, though. And not only is the, the fact that you don't actually have oh. them, and that uh, putting back isn't going to have this mortar anymore yeah, from the looks of things. That was a nice rifle nade over the hedge. Couldn't quite see it. Will he wipe it, though? Oh, that was oh, close. That was very close. Gets away in the end. P4 is going to be dealing with the MG. The SU-76 moving in. We'll fire its shot. We'll force that one away. Pack as well as on the road. The P4 is safe. He has the, the pack to cover its retreat path. So I really don't see this P4 going down anytime soon. Unless he hits a mine. There is a mine here. Not many of them, though. But I mean, it depends on the follow-up as, as well. For yeah. Putting back. He doesn't want to throw too many AT grenades because, I mean, you can only rack up good solution so much. So... Yeah, here we go. He's actually on the mine. The people may detonate it. That could end pretty horribly for that SU-76. The, the house will be a shot blocker, allowing the people to back away. Only has one pyro squad for the repairs, compared to the four, five, six, seven, seven cons. No engineers, but eight cons, my friend. Is, is it eight cons? It's eight cons. Oh, that's eight cons. I'm sorry, but but like really, does putting bag even need engineers? He he's gonna need it to put his tier four, which he might not even do. He's gonna need it for a Minesweeper, which may or may not actually happen if uh, Jeslin doesn't put mines down, yeah. so... Yeah. When you have that many squads of cons, the repairs uh, are pretty good. We've seen SU-85s used to uh, pretty great effect. Yeah, it finds are plausible than SU-85s, but you get the, the same general idea, especially yeah. used around the, the middle section. Oh, wow, the SU-76 is going in deep, but the pack, where is it? It moved around, on now sitting on the strap point, and the kind of Faust comes through as well, pack fires! P4, will he go in? AT grenades, they are go here, but still actually... No, he gets the kill anyway! Nicely played, the P4 gets that shot there, so the P4 hit, the pack hit, the Faust hit, the second P4 shot hit, nicely played, putting bag, might be in some trouble, bro. Yeah, and the MG was there for the suppression, the combined arms is here on point for Jezlin. The pack is overlapping, the Grins are there for the, the Faust, the MG's there to prevent the nades. Jeslin just has such great synergy with his units, and that's really how you have to play Vermark, is, is using those those units together. Um, and yeah, as you said, he's going to have to rebuild that one. Definitely no tier 4 here for Pudding Bag. Uh, he's going to get stuck behind that, and SU-76s, they, they die pretty fast, especially you know, the later the game draws out. Jeslin, he could certainly go for, for a Tiger. He has the command points, just needs a bit more fuel. Tiger and a P4 is going to be great against the SU-76. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. The SU-76 isn't going to know what hit it. 
And it's just not, not great against a Tiger. Yes. You, you can't do enough damage. The the DPS is just not high enough for she. Um, Two range LMGs. Isn't enough. There's a lot of things that aren't enough. And hopefully some more LMGs as well for Jezla. This is such a good adaption. Um, really highlights his skill as a player. Saw this strat once and immediately he, he works out a strat to beat it. Yeah, re really well played here. I also like how he didn't open with the MG. Opening with the MG doesn't give you as much capping power uh, as as the Grins. Especially if you get flanked, you have to retreat that MG early on. It's so hard to recover from yeah. an early MG retreat. Especially on a map like this where you have those cutoffs and those garrisons. And the B-Force is rolling around. There's so many cons, which means so many juicy targets for him. 20 kills already. So much veterancy is actually going to be stacking up there. And the upkeep is, you know, it's still going to be high here for, for Pudding Bag. 58. With, yeah, with not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, I have to remember as well, with the less map control, it means less munitions, which means what, Machine? Less rapid description? Less rapid yeah, description. I did it! You did, you did very well. Uh, so a lot less of that going to be coming out. So it's not going to be able to pop it every time it comes off cooldown anymore. That's just starting to get shredded here. Yeah, up close, those PPS H's are doing great work. What is the retreat? Even despite charging through the open, the, the Vet 3 just gives them... You know, that uh, little less received accuracy. Yeah, Pigrens are running a muck here, an absolute muck. Running a muck. You wouldn't want to invite those Pigrens to a children's birthday party. Well, would yeah, you? No, just, you wouldn't invite them to have anything to do with your support weapons. I mean, <laughs> right. like, support weapons are an important part of, of my army. Of just, your diet. I don't want Pigrens there. No. I really don't. I don't. No. Just, they don't bring anything to the experience. <laughs> oh, another no, the game. That was actually goes to the down. Grenadiers. Yeah. Um, Veteran C3. With that LMG, they're loving life right now. I believe it was vetted close air support. Hey, why not? Just spam another P4. He has the strafes. What did he actually go for? It was dive bomb. Oh! oh! I can see where he was going. I'm not sure where he ended up getting, but I could definitely see where, where Jeslin was it going. It actually wasn't that. too bad because there's three medics and there was like yeah. four cons. Really, I think it's it's about the mental game. It's just like, I've had enough of this spamming. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. dive bomb your base. It, it, it's, it's a slap down, you know. It's sit right down putting bag. Put, put him in his place, and so putting back actually did move his squads away. Yeah, he had it coming. Yeah, so he, it definitely was nowhere near as worse uh, as it could have otherwise been. So, well, Papa Jezelin, and he has munitions for it. Yeah, why not? I mean, like again, because putting back all he can do is, is go SU76. He, it's going to take him too long to go for his tier four. He's only got 200 VPs. Wait. That's, no, it's Jezlin with 200 VPs. Yeah, dude, you have to remember, this is Pudding Bag we're talking it's about. It's the strat. He always, has the P he always has the VPs. Even if even if you don't think he has the VPs, even if you think he has no map control and no right tap map control, he has the VPs. On the wipe, though, I mean, it really goes to show that it's hard to micro this many squads. So is. that is true. Pudding Bag may play the VP games. Again. Yeah, well, when, you, <laughs> when you have that many squads, the capping power is just absurd. And SU-76 being rebuilt, we may see up Stug. Stug's a, a certainly good counter to the SU-76. They're just better in a slugfest. And he doesn't really need the anti-infantry from a second P4. He already has the vet advantage. He has another wiped uh, mortar with this Pigren squad. Pigren's having a great time. Oh, here we go. What's this going to be? That's oh, an yeah. AT strafe. Yeah. Oh, wow! Oh, AT ouch. strafe does a lot of damage to oh, these cons. That's even more damage. And look, putting back... He is on 20 manpower right now. He can't afford <laughs> to reinforce all of those squads. Now, that was really great because the AT strafe actually does more damage than the anti-infantry yeah. strafe. The, the anti-infantry strafe, it's cheaper, but it's more about the suppression. suppression. If, if you want to get a lot of models, uh, the AT strafe is, is, is certainly better. And because they're all clumped up, it means you've got multiple squads uh, by timing that retreat path uh, so excellently. So, yeah, Jezlin is, is just playing absolutely well. This really... it. It shows why Jeslin is, is such a, a supreme player. You know, yeah, why he's definitely. been rank one uh, for so long um, and won so many tournaments. Because he just plays solid. Real solid play. Uh, so SU76 is here, but what can Pudding do? It's just going to be so hard to use it. I'm sure once Jeslin sees it, Insta Stug is just going to be. Yeah, Insta Stug, or maybe just a Pigren squad, or Shrek with yeah, a Pigren. Because he has a second Pigren well. squad. Keep the Vet 3 squad with just for the, P the STGs for the anti infantry. A Vet 0 1 with, with Shreks would certainly zone away the SU 76 with combination of the P4 and the pack. 
Pitbull sees it, gonna be backing away here. He may wipe this uh, mortar again. Yep, easy. Grab a conscription though. Mortar's been wiped though. about three times so far. Yeah, it hasn't quite had the impact that he's wanted. Not like that back out, so. Yeah, well, not in the, the yeah, the Cheslon, yeah. I'm uh, not in the same position. There's not really oh. a safe location to have it in. Yeah, that rifle nade was deadly. The problem with sticking behind light cover is you get clumped up for it. And light cover gives you uh, less received accuracy. It doesn't do anything about damage. Where light cover gives you less damage and less accuracy. So by being behind cover, you take less damage from grenades and explosives. Light cover actually can be worse because you just have the squad clumping um, and no benefit versus grenades. We've seen that uh, a couple of times throughout the series. Is, is Rifle Nades just getting a really nice wipe on a clumped up Maxim. So, second P4 here for Jeslon, which makes me think he just wants to split them up. Uh, another way to deal with that SU-76 is split up the AT. You can't be on both sides of the map at the same time. Yeah, or just all in it. He has a Blitzkrieg. And, you know, SU-76, they, they do have a slow rotation. If, if you do get the circle straight, but you have to flank it off, uh, you know, it can't really, can't really deal well. And... I mean, Jeslon doesn't really know this, but there's no, there's not a lot of munitions for putting bags, so he doesn't have to worry about a, uh, a chorus of, of AT grenades. No. <laughs> I think we decided on rain. Rain. Uh, I like rain. Rain of AT grenades. A chorus of conscript squads, or? Yeah. But I mean, it, it has the, the nice, like, so. the sound effects when, like, 10 grenades detonate in succession. Fair enough. Uh, One of these people is starting to get chunked now. He's going to get vet too soon, which certainly helps the extra armor means uh, a lot more shells will be bounced off. No real supporting AT here either. Like, no this gun or anything like that. Um, putting back. He, just, he doesn't have the manpower to invest into his gun. It's just reinforcing these consequence squads continuously. It's a recon. Jeslin looking for something. What's he going to find? Out there. May maybe just hold on to it for now. Yeah. I didn't think there was anything there he, he, he really could have gone for. It was all dodgeable. You have to catch on retreat. Yeah, nice. exactly. And I, I really wish putting back the best of luck trying to capture this middle VP with a Vet 3 MG. And look at the placement here for, for Jeslin. It, it's such clever placement. The, the MG, it's, it's covering the VP and the road. So his flank is exposed, but there's a P4 on the flank. He's, he doesn't have the MG facing forward because he has the P4 there anyway. So... Is this is really this advanced uh, placement of MGs from Jeslin has just been uh, very impressive this entire game. Right. Uh, so what we're not seeing from Pudding Bag and something we could be seeing is, is playing for time. You can play for time when you have 440 BPs. He's got a fair bit of fuel in the bank here, so maybe moving back and just trying to hold a couple of points behind cover would be the better choice here. Maybe even try for the, the top, top munitions, for example. Um, play with the time that you have. You have 440 VPs oh, worth of time. No, this can be another Dropping wipe. squads and losing all this manpower. It's just not an efficient way of yeah, playing. Yeah, the problem though is the longer this drags out, Jizlin's going to have more and more tanks. Yeah, just more and more fuel. He's going to have a tanks. third P4. More and more strafes and uh, bombs. It's a, it's a tough spot for putting back to be in. Hold out too long and there's too many munitions, too much fuel for Jezlin. If you if you keep throwing squads away like this, I, I think really get putting back lost this game a while ago. He's been trying his best to recover, uh, and again, he has like a big VP lead, so it certainly uh, isn't futile trying. You know, if he does get some nice flanks, he could wipe some of these vetted squads with PPSHs, but the MG play, once again, we see the same spot, but it just gets three models, uh, forces them to retreat. Too many P4s here. SU-76 could die too easily. Losing that SU-76 was, um, was very punishing, but I think more so the T-70. When the T-70 went yeah. down, it meant that he he couldn't really win those infantry engagements. He couldn't force off squads, uh, which gave him the fuel lead. Oh, that was another dive bomb. Actually, I don't think it was it was too bad, though. It was uh, That's five cons and some medics. So... Training the medics is still nice, though. Yeah, um, it, it takes them a while to respawn. certainly does. Uh, you can nade this one, but, I mean, really, is it going to achieve much? Probably not. Yeah, he's going for the nades. He do. Needs two of them to actually get the snare. First one does the damage. Second doesn't even go for that one. Yeah. Didn't move. Didn't really do anything. And he could lose this on retreat here. Maxim suppressing the grins, but P4, you can't exactly suppress Krupp Steel. It's quite difficult. Yes. At least I've been told. So, uh... I don't speak from first-hand experience. <laughs> to steal our sector. And, yeah, Jezelin has all the map. There's three points held from putting back, but they're they're not very important points. 
you, you wouldn't exactly host a banquet in those points. You know, there isn't really... There's not a lot of room. No. <laughs> not many resources. It would be quite difficult. That Mortar is just not having a good day. Not at all. Look, look at Pudding Bag's manpower. He, yeah, he, he can't, can't reinforce, reinforce these squads. squads. Ready at your disposal. Yeah, it makes so much sense when you have map control. When you lose the map control, you're in a, such a hard position. Yeah, I think the con spam is fine, but losing his tanks was really the end of him. Mm. The, the vehicle preservation needs to be so important. I mean, no matter what faction you play, um, especially when you don't have call-ins and you, you have the, the tier 3, you suck on that. Losing the T70, SU-76 as a follow-up was just too much. Too much for supporting bag. It's another re another re recon. He has another dive bomb or a strafe, or two strafes. So having this this huge blob is going to be hard. That's a uh, this as a pin. The anti infantry strafe. Yeah, yeah, nice. Force all, all these squads off. That's a retreat again. Wow. Well, he gets this one as well. You need to dodge it sideways because it has a really long line. But the the cone, like the the thin, is it, the narrow is quite thin. I can't words. The width, the width. That's what I meant. The width is quite thin. Uh, people, was, that's a blitzkrieg. Yeah, here we go. He's looking for machine. it. Does he have the munis? He does have it, but he's getting very close. Actually, he gets behind the tier two. He can't fire through that one. But he will call down an anti-tank strike. People, he gets the damage engine. This could be Whoa. deadly. Just uh, dodged him. Wasn't hard. wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Could have been a lot worse there, but there's nothing really to chase this P4 up yeah. and finish it off. p 4s moved up. Once again, the tag team is here. The SC76 cons, went down they to just, AT strafe as well. Oh wow, they did. I didn't notice that. Yeah, it loses that one, so the P4 will waddle away with its damage engine. 41 kills. GG for putting bag. Dizzelin, that is one of the best games I've seen him play. That's a he masterclass. Just, Absolute masterclass. Brilliant. I love your work, Jezelyn. Love, love his work, yeah. The, the fanboy the, is real. The adaption was just so good. Went for that earlier Grenadier squad. Uh, went for that. Actually got his upgrades as well onto those Grenadiers. Yeah, the stuff that, that we were picking up for in Game 1, where he might have been able to pull something out. He thinks about it in Game 2, and then he pulls it out in Game 3 and says, yeah, I know how to deal with this now. I can deal with this strat. Yeah, and I, I don't think it was it was all about strats. A lot of it was just about the micro. He yeah, just had really micro, good yeah, engagements. That was great. Um, and that, that MG, oh. Nice try putting bag, but yeah. still, this is, um, it's only 2-1. 2-1 for Jezelin. This is a best of five series. We have two more games left. The next one uh, will be on Feynmanville. So it will, same map, so it will be swapped around. Uh, Jezelin will be the the allies this the time. choice of faction, in fact. So, okay. Uh, Jezelin gets to choose what he what he plays as, and it looks like he, yeah, he's going to choose his US forces here. So Yeah, and US is, is arguably his best faction. I think so, yeah. It's certainly yeah, his highest yeah, ranked, and, and we saw in the second game, he completely crushed Pudding Bag. Um, a lot of it because of that pack howitzer. So, yeah, the, really, the pressure is on for Pudding Bag. The Ostrupen didn't work well for him. I I, I don't want to see the Ostrupen this time. No, right I want to see something different. I mean, the Ostrupen, in theory, could have worked, but there's there's so many things that can go wrong, and if they do go wrong, yeah, in trouble. And Jeslin's already shown he knows how to deal with the Ostrupen. He had a, he had a really nice build order, and that I mean, it just works. It's a good general build order anyway. So why not go for it this game? Uh, if he does see the Ostrupen, so we'll be getting into it. Yeah, if you are just joining us, this is the semi-finals of the Flexi Time Championship number four. This is Jeslin and Pudding Bag. Once again, all of these videos will be posted to our YouTube channel, which I will once again post now uh, in the chat if you want to subscribe to us. We do a lot of Company of Heroes 2 shoutcasts as well as other RTS content. Um, but we are now ready for our fourth and potentially the last game. Yeah, if Jeslin takes this game, he's going to take the semi-final. Whoops. He's going to move on to our grand final. Indeed. So, putting bag, there's no room for error. Has a, an MG as a start. Maybe he goes for the garrison cap with these Pyos. That can be a common strat. No, goes for the, the actual the cutoff here. Um, because now Jezelin, he's going for the, the garrison. Yeah, so this garrison is so important. Very crucial. And... Whoa! Double Pyo. So maybe he is going Ostrupen. Wow. Double Pyo. I haven't seen that for a while, Machine. Yeah, unless he goes double MG. Oh, yeah. I don't even know. See, yeah, see, this is what uh, Jeslin didn't do in the previous game. You don't have a lot of, of fighting potential here. You've got a bit of cap power um, going for that second Pioneer squad, but you, you can't really fight. Uh, can't fight against the, uh, the Rifleman at all. Yeah, you will have good capping power, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's certainly interesting. I'm, I'm trying to work out what he's going to do with it. Lots of flamers, bro. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, well, we'll have to see. If he, if he does decide to go for Ostrom, it makes a little bit more sense. But it's a bit too um, late now. He would have got them by yeah, now if would. he was going yeah, to. Yeah, you would think. We would have gone for something. Nonetheless, oh, there we'll is see how one. it goes. So, yeah, going to be throwing down the, the tier one now. Okay, First I, Pyre goes for the caps. Second I'm, I'm one builds. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, th I just had a revelation. I was really excited to tell yeah. you. I think he's going for a Pyre Flamer. He, he, he so? must be yeah. rushing yeah. a Pyre Flamer. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't want to go Pyre Flamer and then not have a Minesweeper. So, that's... Because if he goes heavy cavalry, he may have mines. Yeah. Um. He doesn't have mines. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can see what he's going for. That definitely makes sense, machine. I mean, as we we said in the first game, we saw Jezlin go for that early mines. We've got to go for that, um, just in case. Yeah. Um, certainly less important against US as Soviets, but still, especially with how common. It's, it's still a potential. Heavy cavalry. Yeah. Yeah, and and we saw Jezlin go for that one uh, previously, so it is, um, quite preferred here. At least so far, in our small sample size of three games. Also, I hear on the the uh, the old grapevine that it is quite popular though. So, um, MG placement quite good here. Uh, Jeslin's reactions are also on point though. Should be able to get around this garrison hopefully. Yeah, it only has one window though, so it's a pretty bad fight to actually take with an MG. I think it's one window, maybe two. At least avoid no, that's the, one window. The pinning, if nothing else. Yeah, with the Grens there as well. He certainly can't uh, fight that one. Nice little trick coming out there. Jumping into the garrison, jumping immediately out again. So you get the vision, uh, and you don't take too too much damage. Wow, putting Sniper as well. This is... I don't know, his micro is going to have to be really on point here. Two Pioneer squads and the Sniper. I love this wire. Ah, oh, such good wire. You can vault the fence, yes, but MGs can't vault. And that really uh, makes it harder for the MG to cap this garrison. Fair and it also just messes your pathing up. Like, you don't... Always think about it. Oh, they opened this. That wasn't used to be open previously. Open now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Sniper's going to be coming out now. Jeslin looks like he's going through the same strat as game two. Keeping a manpower flow, going for his captain, and then immediately a pack howitzer. Which isn't the best thing as the Sniper. Not quite as good as it's, as it's going to be as it was on uh, Angoville. Don't have that really safe position and doesn't cover quite as much ground in terms of, of sheer points. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the ideal pack how it's a placement and probably here. The problem yeah. is... Um, I generally play my mortars from that area. With, with arc weapons, you, you can't have them behind a garrison because it just it hits the garrison. With mortars, you can. Yeah. But with uh, arc weapons like a pack how it's a ISG, no, you can't do that. So on the road, probably. Uh, we'll see. May, may send it up wherever he needs it to. Um... Captain is on its way now, and so far Jezlin has most of the map. Neither player locking in a commander, which pretty much means no Ostrupin. If you're going to go Ostrupin, you really want to go it from the start. Sniper will reveal itself. There we go. Rifleman does fall. There's the initial shot coming out. Because Sniper has to have a big impact. Uh, this is essentially what putting bag strategy hinges on. He's hinged it all on this Sniper actually performing. Because, I mean, look at Jezlin's map control. He's all over the place. We're not seeing the standard putting bag where he has squads all over the map because he really can't take these one-on-one -on -one engagements. He has two Pioneer squads. Yeah, and we can see that already. Putting bag's been pushed back pretty far. I mean, it's not completely surprising for Vermac to get pushed back by the early game of US, but more so than you would certainly expect. No munitions point here, even losing the strat point. So, yeah, I, I really don't... Oh, no, this Pyo squad may go down into this rifleman. Oh, Ooh. loses the Pyo squad. And that's the one that had the Minesweeper. Oh, pudding bag. Oh, dear. He's already so far behind in territory. Now he lost a Pyo. He's getting his 2 2 2. Yeah, but there's a captain already on the field. It's ready to go. The steward's going to be very close up. Maybe Jeslin should use the. Supervise. Did it, did it seem obvious that I didn't know the ability Not at name? all, Machine. All right, Not good. at all. I think you flowed on really nicely there. My inflection uh, uh, hit it quite well. Yeah, I think you, you've done well there. Um, uh, i tell you what's not going well, though. This Pioneer Squad. Uh, gonna have to fight those riflemen up close. MG42 just not placed as well as, as Jezlin's was. Um, yeah, it, Jezlin it, just plays it better. He had, he had the, the uh, Grenadier Squads in the front, had the wire along the side of that garrison, which stopped the flanks. He certainly got the the MG covering the fuel, but he's lost everything else. Double munitions here in the bank for for Jezelin. So if he wants to, he can rush out those bars and nades like, very quickly. The pack house is firing as well. 
We'll be suppressing that one. He may go the heavy cavalry for the smoke so he can uh, he can flank that MG or not even flank, just run up to it. Stuart's on its way now. It's a long build time though. Ambulance would be nice as well to have for Jeslin. He's pretty low uh, health on his, on his squads. How many kills is that sniper on? That's what I want to know. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay, it's starting to make an impact. That's not too bad. It makes an impact as far as manpower, but not so much as, as far as territory. That, that's kind of always been the way the snipers are. I think the main problem was going for two pioneers into sniper. Yeah. You want grenadiers in the front lines. You want to be winning engagements and then following that up with actually capping points. That's not what we're seeing though. We're seeing not a lot of, of frontline infantry for putting. And he has the, the supporting weapons that you'd normally have for frontline infantry. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And he rushed out a minesweeper. And with... another MG. Yeah, and the minesweeper, like, because the, the mines are tiers, uh, CP0, so you can get those nades, uh, sorry, the mines, immediately as US if you go to heavy, heavy company. But, like, why would. Oh, Stuart on the flank, this 222 wow, is so he dead. Is he gets so the stun gone. as well. Nowhere to run, there's no support. This 222 is going down. Catch you later, my friend. Even did the pack outs. Out, no, no, he didn't, didn't get the, the kill that Stuart did, but I thought the pack outs might actually get it. Putting bag, ha what has he got left? He can't deal with the Stuart, the pack house are for support. The sniper had to retreat, and now it's going to be so hard to use the sniper with the Stuart on These the MGs field. aren't vet one, he may even lose the MG on retreat here to the Stuart. And as I was saying earlier, like, why would he go double Pyo if he wasn't going to rush a flamer? Like, w wouldn't it make more sense to go, you know, more grins and then eventually later on get a second Pyo if you want? But I think rushing out the part, yeah, it was a huge blow. Gets lucky with the Stuart's turret rotation, so he might actually keep this MG up. Yes, he does. Um, Stuart turret was facing the exact wrong way. Actually, had to rotate around there. Building a pack now, another minesweeper. And Jeslin, he hasn't locked in. He's ever come heavy cavalry commander. There's He's no mine seen the minesweepers. He's probably not going to. I mean, maybe he, he would have if it weren't for this minesweeper. MG gets wiped by the pack howitzer and the Stuart. Oh, dear. Oh dear pudding. My heart sinks a pudding bag. Yeah, I was, I was, I was feeling the, I was feeling the comeback. I was feeling the fifth game, machine. But it's going to be really hard for pudding to actually get there. My heart is with him. I'm, I'm, we're with the underdog. We're Aussies. Believe? The Aussies <laughs> believe in the underdog. We're, we, 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 it's we've true. Got that, we've got that real belief. So uh, we don't, however, believe in sleep. Not That's so much. Not, not no, something that we no, enjoy no, no, doing. No, 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 no. We enjoy what we do believe in is, is casting at about 4 a.m. Machine. Yeah, That's nice flank here, but actually, because the pace MGs. Is that a nade? No, no. It looked like a nade was coming through, but actually it wasn't. That's a pack. It will fire a shot. Stuart backs away. MG being recaptured. Two MGs are setting up, though. And... Yep. Oh. What? I thought the Stuart was going to go down for a second. Yeah, the MG actually goes down attack there. Grounds it. Yeah, attack grounds it. Doesn't actually get the hit, though. Uh, uh, that's actually bars we have. Back. So Jeslin is just following this up brilliantly. Uh, he's doing everything he needs to. What else does he need? Nothing. He's got bars. Stuart. Captain, pack howitzer. All he needs now is a kebab and he's, he's set. <laughs> It'll be absolutely fine. Nothing better to munch on while you're playing Company of Heroes 2, Machine. Uh, sniper, it's, I mean, it's hit for FTC 1 now. It's not doing nothing to make myself sound completely redundant, I suppose. Um, it is doing something. It's it's finding some <laughs> riflemen, but it's, it's not uh, translating into any map control for putting... Again, you know, caps the MG, but... So, this pack howitzer actually has zero kills, but it's had a lot of shots that have done damage and have done suppression. So, it's, it's contributing, despite not having the most impressive KD. Yeah, not as much as uh, it did in Jeslin's first use of it. So. Yeah, no. But definitely still having an impact, especially when putting insists on continually fighting around this area. Sniper makes it. Oh, he was, takes a shot. He was revealed briefly, but I don't think he was within Stuart range. Stuart wasn't in range, I yeah. don't think. Sniper smartly backs away there. Stuart definitely could have chased that one down. I mean, there's no fuel here. Like, maybe if uh, if there was a Stug E um, commander, he could maybe go for that. But, like, no, he doesn't. Puma? Yeah. yeah. But he has the captain. He can go bazookas on his on his echelon if he if he wanted to just have the extra. So I have those weapon racks unlocked, so that yeah. definitely is an option. 
Smoke can you even we can't even afford it, it's 83. No, yeah. You, it wouldn't fuel. though. It's a lot of fuel machine. Yeah, uh, it's probably the, the best choice, because then you can also then go the command tank without having to tech up, and he's yeah. got no fuel. Yeah, he certainly can't go for a tier 3. This is why you run mobile defense. Yeah. If you're in a really rough position and you need something, you go for that Puma. You know, no teching and you have access to the command tank, as you we were saying, machine. This yeah. is uh, probably the, the best of a bad situation and for the, pudding. The mobile defense build actually works well late game against US, because there isn't really any high health tanks. You, you, you got Shermans and Jacksons, both of which you can deal with with, uh, with Pumas. Pumas and, and command tanks and packs. However, now we have Pershings. Pershings man. Pumas cannot deal with Pershings. I don't think Pumas can deal with Pershings machine. But, uh, the, uh, the Pumas would have a very rough time indeed. Will this Rifleman squad actually get down and the garrison does get out just oh, in time? Oh, this Grand squad falls oh, as no. well. <sighs> Putting back, he's, he's, he's trying so hard. Ostrup and reserves do come in. Not a bad drop either. Vet three and an LMG on the other one. Very forward pack out as well here from this one. Absolutely no fear. At yeah, this point. Hey, why not? The closer you get, the less scatter it has. And it's not like there's anything that Pudding has that can really dive after this pack out and punish it. Sniper can't get anywhere near it with the steward on the field. Yeah, he can maybe fire a couple of shots. He's doing well though. Twenty-one kills. So it's putting on the manpower bleed, but again, not territory, which doesn't equate into tanks, which is a thing that putting bag needs quite desperately now. Uh, a fair bit of fuel here for for Jeslin. It maybe go easy eights even. He's, he's got enough fuel pretty much for an easy eight. Easy eight. He'll be close to it. He just needs a bit more. Pack takes a shot. Because I think it'll take him too long to go for a Pershing, and easy eights are strong against Pumas. Much more so than uh, regular Shermans. You definitely think you'd go for something else before going for the uh, the Pershing. Have a cavalry's in. Yeah, he locks it in just for the the Rangers. Yeah. The Rangers really are gonna nice they're gonna completely destroy his Ostrupen. Yeah. Oh, he got a bar on one of them. Wow. Another another good play from Jezlon. Really works out what his opponent's going for as soon as he sees something. Uh, locks in that commander, starts responding to it immediately. Uh, lost his. Thompson actually, so he won't do much to this. Yeah, tank. Having a couple of rifles, really not going to be enough. Maybe a bit of weapon damage using the bazookas, but that's about it. So still the Stuart on the field. Ostrupin may even get wiped here. There's two squads of bar, there's rifle, a lot and of then. bars. He actually he didn't chase them as well as he should have, but. Oh well. Get Squad's on the retreat path. Well, Reaction can actually get sniped down here. Can the Pioneers finish it off? The oh, MG it. does. Oh wow, the direct hit on the sniper, but it won't kill it. Snipers have 82 health, pack howitzer. Same as Mortars, it's 80, so you do need follow up or a bit of um, damage before to actually kill it. So, putting playing it safe, and he does have the sniper at full health at all times when out on the field, so even taking that direct shot, not going to lose the sniper, so quite smart. Yeah, exactly. When you do have an opponent with, with indirect fire, you need to make sure the sniper's on full health. Um, has the nade on, nades on this, this Rangers, but not nice pack up with the MG. Won't keep it around within nade range. MG moves backwards. Nade goes out anyway there. Munitions investment there for Jezlon. Oh, Puma! Smoke coming out. Here, Here we go. Puma. Has to be careful of the AT grenades as well. But it has to have an impact at the same time. Yeah, the captain's, something with the Stuart. captain's pretty close to the Stuart, so he, he can't really all in with the Puma. Especially not if the Stuart has the the stun, the shell shock. But it's certainly now he's, he's got a, a lot more freedom with the, the Puma. He can he can zone away the, the Stuart, which is going to be great news. He may actually get his fuel point back. Uh, and Jezlin, I think he's just happy just to chill with the VPs and, and save up eventually for a Pershing. I mean, maybe a Jackson would be a good choice, just, just to, to out zone the zoning Puma. Because <laughs> he doesn't Could need be a machine. No, already... not really, no. Oh, sorry, the Sherman, I Sherman. meant. Not at the moment. There's not really anything Pudding has that, that threatens Sheslin at this point. What we can do, I mean, Pudding just has no map control at all. Rough spot. Stuart's still alive as well, that's going to be really nice. Again, it's just, it's all about the threat of that, that Stuart. Um, on the support weapons in addition to... Uh, There's a smoke. The sniper. There's a smoke. I was going to say that just before, we haven't actually seen Deslon use the smoke. Yep. Bazooka from the garrison will fire, it's going to be zoning away the Puma. Rangers are closing in for the Ostrupen. Rifleman, they do get suppressed by... 
not not the, the bunker MGs, but I guess a, a base HMG. Looks like this. Gonna survive as well. Looks like this this MG is really low on health. Oh wait. Oh wait, no, I'm being I'm being silly because can you, I thought you you can't damage the weapons when they're crewed. They, they changed it. Oh, okay, right, of course. You yeah, only yeah, can yeah, damage yeah, them yeah, when yeah. they're uh, decrewed. Really nice uh, upgrades here from Zeslan. Upgrades really are important um, for USF. Having lots of bars, trading incredibly effectively. Putting, He's trying so hard to try and come up, get back into this game, but I, I just can't think of a way back for him here. Well, he has the Puma now, and the Puma, the Puma, it, it yeah. can also force retreats off riflemen. So that Puma is exactly what putting back needed. If you can hold the fuel, he will then get a, a command, command tank, tank, which... We'll be fine. We'll be all, all fine and dandy until Pershing shows up, and then it's like, well, nah, there's trouble. a Pershing. Um, yeah, yeah the, man, the man tank is the, is the major thing here for putting. He does only have 157 VPs left. Jelen has been bleeding him hard. The only thing they can deal with a Pershing is is if there's two or three packs in the one spot, and he dries in front of the packs, which probably isn't going to happen. Uh, the, the, the Boomers just will have no chance. They won't penetrate. You know, they, they can't go for an all-in with a Stuart. Yeah, hard with a Stuart to, nearby. Yeah, with a Stuart nearby, not only that, the, the fact that Jizzlin has the access to the mines. Ah, look at this. He actually went bazookas on his echelon. Nice. Smart. Oh, nice. I love that. More supporting AT here is exactly what Jizzlin needed. Prevents that Puma from going in deep. Yeah, that MG is looking pretty dead to me. Sniper is in the open as well. And more bazookas. He's zoning away the Puma because he went the bazooka. Such a great choice. The MG is, yeah, it's going to go down for sure now, especially with the Rifleman there with the bar. Fuels being decaptured, putting bag. We have lost an MG, team. MG didn't get dropped. Okay. Our anyway. Um, wait, no, I was... Okay, so the, actually the MG was weak. Was weak, <laughs> yeah. You think so, Machine? Yeah, yeah I just confused myself. Me. That's alright. Um, just has so much fuel, look. 380 fuel at this point. Oh, he actually got a Faust off. Yep. Uh, uh, Puma goes for it. I mean, what choices they have at this juncture? Has that damage engine now, though. Rifleman get the nade off just in time. Not a lot of follow-up there, so it looks like the Puma is probably going to survive this one. A second call-in of the Austrian reserves, but none of them have the LMGs, and one no. of them was Vet Zero, so didn't get a very good call-in this time around. The LMGs really was what putting needed. Yeah. The chance to actually deal with these Rifleman having the bars. Backhouse is doing some great work on the side. Got Vet 2 now, it's 10 kills. Sniper's Veteran C3 here for putting, he's been so many kills, if only the Grenadiers, there were Grenadiers in the front line to actually follow these up. Yeah. So much bleed onto the Rifleman, it's it's what it's what's keeping Jezlin's squad that count fairly low, is the fact that uh, they keep getting sniped, all these Riflemen keep getting low. Yeah. Don't know what really more there is to it. There's only three squads of riflemen as well, so yeah. Jezelin, he doesn't have much manpower, I believe. He's got the captain in the ranges. Um, he's, he's doing well. He hasn't lost a squad. He's had all of his squads this entire game. Classic Jezelin, though. Yeah. I mean, if, if, he, if you see Jezelin lose a squad, it's probably because he wanted to lose the squad. Yeah. He needed that pop cap or he needed something. Yeah. So pretty rare to see him lose a squad just on a missed micro. Putting bag, I, I think... I mean, the, the second pyo, it, it like may have worked, but he lost the pyo to, to, for no real reason, just wasn't paying attention. And from that, he was already so far behind that that was just extra icing on the cake, but of of like poisonous ice icing. Not nice icing. No, no. not not good icing. Uh, then three pegrins killing your support weapons icing, I suppose. Yeah, that one. That, that's exactly what I meant. Thanks, Blake. Yeah. Alright, machine. And. The, the three VPs have been held for pretty much the entire time. Putting bags running low. There's only 84 VPs left, but he's he's desperate. This is his last game. There there is no fifth game if putting bag concedes. Jeslin's already 2-1, so this is going to be it. Jeslin will move on to the grand final if uh, if putting bag doesn't pull something out. Such a good idea with those. Oh, that's going to be an AT grenade as well. Definitely going to be following this one up. The synergy here from Jeslin is so good. Bazookas with the rifleman, so you can get the damage off. Here they we go. Out. Pershing's on the field. Fantastic, that's what I'm talking about. 
And now we put it just has nothing yet. He's not even close to the command tank at this point. No, command tank wouldn't do anything against no, the person. No, I wouldn't person. either, so I mean... It, it's, you know, it's very anti-infantry. Yeah, it needs packs, but packs aren't going to cut it. Even the Persian can wipe packs. It's very powerful against infantry. about three or four packs to actually <laughs> make an impact, and a yeah. tank would be nice as well. Really, you want Stugs. Stugs are an excellent counter to the Pershing, but he hasn't had the tier three. There we go. Pershing's on the field. He's found a damage engine, a wounded boomer. There is a pack. Turret's facing the wrong direction. Isn't a very good engagement. Actually, the Pershing is getting destroyed. Whoa. That's the critical coming through. He may lose this one. The pack's firing. The Rear the armor's exposed right. as well. Rear armor hit. The pack oh, gets wiped. The pack goes down. However, a Faust comes through. Damage engine. There's another Faust on the Ostrooper. Well, sniper, sniper gets wiped. Incendiary, it may get the rear armor. Puma, it's damage engine, but it's crawling forward. It's chasing after Here the we go, the Faust. Oh, forward. it bounced. The Faust bounced. The yeah. Puma, can I get the it shot off though? It. Can it I get, get the it. penetration? He nope. missed. Bounced the he rear missed. armor. But look at the feel. Not a big deal even if he loses it. Incendiary might... Do it. He's out of munitions. He can't send the air in here. Puma still hasn't got yeah, it yet. Yeah, it's bounced. The Pershing is so low, but it keeps bouncing all these Puma shots. Oh, That's another wow. bounce. The oh, what? <laughs> they have a lot of range. <laughs> the long range snipe there. The Puma actually goes down. Uh, that Pershing, yeah. it lives. And there's the GG call from putting a really intense end it as well. to smart. this series. That yeah, was uh, surprising. I certainly didn't think the Pershing was going to get as low uh, as it was going to. Drove right in, into that pack, got the um, the target weak point. Yeah, good manners here from Pudding Bag. Jeslin, he just played fantastically. Yeah, and that's just, that's just Jeslin. And bag. he really showed that it, it wasn't just that that lucky pack Howard. So he, he played brilliantly in his other games as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, huge shout out for Pudding Bag. Number 7 seed, took a game off Jeslin. Yeah, uh, very unconventional deal. strategies. Um, yeah, doing so well. He definitely did, yeah. Coming to the tournament, getting to the semifinals, well done. But Jezlon will have the opportunity to move on to the grand final uh, and a chance to defend his title as the uh, the grandmaster, the winner of the, the previous Flex Time Championship. Yeah, so the, rest of the, the grand final is going to be on Sunday uh, and that will be streamed by AE. Um, we will... We will link the the time and yeah, the stream. Do you have uh, it written down yes, here? Yes, thirteen hundred uh, GMT. Thirteen hundred GMT. GMT uh, will be that. So that's on Sunday. Sunday, the twenty second. Twenty second of November. And that will be the grand I'll final. just copy his uh, his stream link. It's a pretty funny URL as well. Account unaccessible, I believe. Yeah, account eliminator. So okay. definitely uh, keep an eye out for that one on Sunday. Uh, it's going to be pretty hype. Um, you know, we've got Jezlin, so you, you're guaranteed for a good time when you when you have Jezlin in, in your tournament. Um, other than that, uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for Relic for uh, working with us and supporting the community. Yeah, really big thank you to, to Relic for setting this up and uh, setting this stream up. We really uh, have enjoyed casting for, uh, for a big audience. It's been a lot of fun. Um, really good stuff coming out there. Big shout out to our big man, the community manager. Yeah, Carl's so, been great. On you, mate. Cool. Uh, also, so just to summarize as well, these will be going on to our YouTube channel, um, which is now in the, the Facebook chat. So subscribe to us if you want to see these, if you miss them, or if you want to watch them again. Um, and if you do want to follow our content, um, our Facebook is also linked in as well. We do we do a lot of casts for Company of Heroes and other stuff as well. Facebook.com slash General Gentlemen. Cool. Well, that'll wrap us up for now, folks. It's been a blast. Really Time has to go been. home and sleep. It's 4 a.m., but it's been... <laughs> Doesn't feel like it, you it know. Doesn't feel like it, no. It feels um, like a Friday night, it really you know. Does, Just finished yeah. work, ready to party. <laughs> cool. Cheers, guys.